In less than two weeks' time, comedian Jack Whitehall is going to be back hosting the Brit Awards in front of a live audience of 4,000 people. But this morning, he's joining us to talk about another issue close to his heart. Cocktails and vodka. <laughs> well, these cocktails have a secret ingredient to make sure nothing is wasted. Jack joins us now. Uh, now, you've teamed up with Kettle One Vodka, which is all very lovely, for Stop Food Waste Day. What, explain to us about food waste. So, we, we've got to look for food that... No, uh... explain to us about vodka. No, we Jack. don't. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> well, I, uh, what I first want to explain to you about is thank you so much for that uh, lead-in. Having Andy Peters giving away a caravan on the set of Bridgerton is just... That's the way to start my day. Last time I was on, I had five minutes of peers shouting at Anne Widdicombe. <laughs> and that was definitely a much nicer way Things to start changed. my day. But Things have changed. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, so, yeah, Food Jack. Waste Week, which is this week, um, it's something that I'm very passionate about. We throw away um, tons of perfectly good food uh, every year in Britain. And so I've teamed up with Kettle One Vodka uh, to come up with this fun initiative of trying to save some of that food and turn it into lovely cocktails. So how do, so how do we sorry, do that? What kind of waste food do waste we... into cocktails? Yeah. That sounds... Yes. Sorry, yes. that sounds thoroughly unpleasant. No, no, no. Well, I mean, it may be unpleasant, but the, 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 the <laughs> aim is to try and make something really <laughs> delicious. Um, you head over to my Instagram and I'm putting a call out to the nation to tell me what your most kind of wasted food ingredients are and then I will attempt to turn them into a delicious cocktail so we don't have to throw away this perfectly good food. Um, talking about food, I love watching your TikToks, Jack. Uh, everybody knows I'm a bit of a TikTok addict. Uh, you're currently uh, filming Travels with my father, again, uh, with your lovely dad. I am hoping that our director has the TikTok of you and your dad, uh, and he makes a very good food choice. Let's have a look. Literally one right there. I've got your mother's homemade scotch egg, which looks delicious, and some smoked salmon sandwiches, and wine. I mean, I bet they don't do wine now, do they? No. No, I'd rather stay here. It's delicious. Cheers. Sure you don't want the golden arches? No, thanks. Oh, I love him. That, <laughs> that scotch egg looks absolutely gorgeous. I know, good, good old Hillary. She makes a lovely scotch egg. I, I'm filming with him at the moment, and I have to say it's amazing because he's, he's 81 years old now, which means that you have to shoot 81-year-old man hours, which is like starting at about 10 o'clock. You have to finish bang on one for lunch and a glass of wine, and there has to be a glass of wine. And then he needs to be done in time for countdown. So <laughs> I get to hide behind him and just have the nicest shooting hours ever. This is the earliest I've got up for the entire shoot. <laughs> But is this the travels with my father for Netflix? Are you, you, have you been? You have you had to do it in the UK now, then, supposedly. Yeah, yeah, we've we've been doing it around the UK. We uh, we've gone to to Wales, the Lake District, and and then up in Scotland. And it's actually the the, the final day uh, today. I'm going off to to Biggin Hill to fly Spitfires with him, which he's agreed to, and somehow the insurance have signed that off as well. So. This will definitely be the final day. That is incredible. What, you're going to be flying Spitfires? Yeah, I mean, I don't think... I, the, the key with this show is to just not tell him too much and don't let him, you know, like, have a limited understanding of everything that we do so that he can't say no to it and just throw him into it at the deep end. And I think so... he's going to know at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I think once he's in the plane, it's a win. We'll be fine. I just need to get him in. Um, he's also very good at doing a Hastings impression. I know the whole family is, uh, is a, I mean, the whole country, frankly, is a, sign, uh, a fan of Line of Duty. Let's have a look at you lot doing impressions together. What do we say when we find a burnt copper? Mother of God. <laughs> we caught a sprat and we wanted a mackerel. Mother of God. Now this we're... place is crawling with burnt coppers. <laughs> now we're sucking on diesel. That could be each. This place is crawling with sprats and we want a mackerel. We want to be cooking with gas. We're full of sprats and bent coppers. We want mackerels. Mother of God. <laughs> Your mum really goes for it, doesn't she? She really does. Also, that was not a great angle for her in the kilt. Um, <laughs> yeah. oh. The stuff I will do to entertain this nation. I know. And you're going to entertain us all at the Brits, of course, in a couple of weeks' time.
Now, Jack, that's kind of a weird thing, isn't it? We have been in lockdown for a long time and suddenly we're going to allow 4,000 people uh, to all be together. But, of course, it's one of the test events uh, that is going to enable us all to open up again. I mean, it, it, it's, quite, it's going to be quite a thing for you to be in front of that crowd. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's going to be a, a really amazing event. It's the first um, live music event in the O2 with an audience for you know, over a year. Yeah. And um, I think, you know, it's been a long process to get to this place where we are going to be allowed to have uh, an audience in there. And I'm really, you know, happy that it's going to be key workers that are there and everyone's going to be tested. And, uh, you know, it'll be, a, you know, a big undertaking, I think, to put it on and to put it on in a safe way. But uh, hopefully it will, you know, be a, a moment that kind of marks a, a a shift um, back to normality and, mm. and live events for everyone, which I mm. think everyone you know really deserves by this point. There was one point, you know, the, the the gig of hosting the Brits was a tough gig in the industry. It's like you know, there's a lot of people being criticised. You've really shone and taken it in your own. What's how do you approach it? What's your sort of thought process? You sort of think, well, God, I'm hosting this thing. People are people are going to knock you, whatever. But but people seem to really warm to you, and the artists in particular as well, despite the ribbing that you give them. Oh. Jason, oh. Just oh, oh, sorry. No, you froze uh, for a minute. We've got you. We've got you. Yeah, well, I mean, I was going to say partly it's because it's live television and anything can happen, as has just been proved by that. <laughs> uh, and I think I'm quite good at rolling with the punches on that show. Um, but I also think it's slightly just making sure you do it for the people at home as well as the people in the room, um, because sometimes they can be a little kind of wrapped up in uh, their own experience rather than <laughs> necessarily paying too much attention to you. But again, like that's why this year will be especially great because it won't all just be music industry executives um, and millionaires. It will be, uh, you real know, people. frontline workers and real people <laughs> that really, really deserve a night out. And I think we'll be so happy to be there and really deserving of having a show put on for them. Yeah, oh, fantastic. It's, it's going to be great fun. Um, Jack, it's lovely to see you this morning. Thanks very much it's indeed. Great. Good luck with the food waste <laughs> and turning it into <laughs> cocktails. <laughs> Look forward to that potato peel cocktail. Amazing. If only I wasn't teetotal anymore. <laughs>